Hi, this is Lori with Time to Be Creative, and today I'm going to show you um, a technique called dry brushing that you can use. Um, well, I've mostly used it on ceramic pieces, but I think you probably could um, use that on anything textured that you might want to paint, um, whether it be um, a clay pot, it could be a piece of resin, actually it could be a piece of carved wood. Um, the technique is basically the same, and uh, the term dry brush uh, comes from the fact that you're going to use your brush dry. Now, if you've done any painting at all, you know you're instructed to uh, wet your brush before you put it into the paint. And um, so in that aspect, this technique is different uh, than most of your painting techniques. This is um, my favorite technique when I was uh, painting uh, ceramics. And so uh, for this project I just went to a local uh, ceramic shop and picked up a few um, tiles. Now generally I would suggest that a tile like this be done in what is called a glaze um, technique uh, because this is obviously a kitchen tile and you would want a surface that you could um, either put into the, the sink and wash clean. Um, so you would need a glaze finish like your china or your, your kitchen um, dishes. But I didn't find too much in the shop that I stopped in that had a whole lot of um, texture on the piece. And so I thought uh, for this purpose, for this project, I could show you um, the technique that I'm working with. And so you'll just need a few um, supplies. So you want the pieces that you're going to paint on. You'll need some clean water, a variety of acrylic paints depending on the project that you're going to work on. You're going to need uh, some paper towel. It's always good to have some clean paper towels handy. And uh, you can use a piece of tin foil or whatever you might have. I just have a little piece, a little thin film of acrylic that I'm going to use as a palette to put some paint on. But you could use um, tin foil, wax paper. Um, I have some of my black paint here just in the lid of a plastic container. You know, whatever you might have available. Um, acrylic paint will stain your clothing, but it does wash off very easily uh, from a plastic surface. Then you'll need a piece of paper bag, just, um, a piece of, I mean you can use, I've used in the past paper toweling, but paper bag is really the easiest to use. So you want to have a piece of paper bag handy. And then you'll need a um, an acrylic paintbrush to base coat your piece of ceramic or whatever you're working on, could be a piece of resin. So you need a, um, a regular paintbrush, and you wanna pick one that um, works with the size of your piece. If you're working on a great big pot, you don't wanna use a little tiny paintbrush. Um, so you wanna keep that in mind when you're picking out your brush. And then you're also going to have um, need for a variety of these bristle brushes. Um, I have some, these are very old, I've had some that are made by Grumbrocker, some by uh, Duncan Ceramics, and Gare. These are brushes that I used many years ago when I was really painting a lot of ceramic pieces. And um, the thing that I would in encourage you with these white bristle brush brushes, it's a stiffer brush. This is the brush we're going to use dry. But although the hairs are stiffer, they do have a little bit of play in them. So you don't want them too stiff. This one might be a little too stiff, but I have experience, so I, I, can, I think I can handle this one. A variety of sizes, again, um, will determine, be determined by the, the uh, type of piece that you're working on. And if you have some kind of a duster brush, that's always handy, too, when you... Um, are working with ceramic, whether you've cleaned the ceramic piece yourself or you purchase it, like these tiles that I purchased were really dusty when I brought them home. So you want to make sure that they're clean and you give them a good dust. 
So to start, <clears throat> um, this technique works best when you have a lot of contrast in your in your piece. And so um, most of the pieces that I've done in the past, I've base coated my piece in black. You could use a dark brown, a dark green. Again, it just depends on um, what you want to do with your piece. Now when I do bunny rabbits, when I would do those for the um, Easter season, I didn't always base coat those in black. If I wanted a really white, bright looking rabbit, I might uh, base coat that in like a taupe or a tan shade. Or I might even do a pink. It would just depend. But for this piece I'm using black. And if you're unfamiliar with um, ceramics, uh, greenware and bisque, uh, refer back to the article that I've been writing on hubpages.com. And um, once the greenware is fired in the kiln, it turns this white color. It's not tremendously smooth like your porcelain uh, bisque would be very smooth. This has a little bit of a, a roughness to it. And you can see I have um, a bunch of grapes and some grape leaves here on this tile. And so what you want to do is uh, get your acrylic paint and you're just going to base coat this black. Now for the base coat you are going to dip and wet your base coat brush because you want to be able to get that base coat color out of your brush. And then all you're going to do is just come in and cover this white surface with a good solid coat of your base color. Again, this can be anything dark because you want a dark surface to remain in the crevices of the piece, the details of the piece, so that when you put your color on top, it really, uh, the color really kind of jumps and pops. So with a piece like this, or say like you're doing an animal, you might be doing um, a dog, a cat, a squirrel, a rabbit, and uh, they might have a lot of fur. Or if you're doing a lizard or a frog, the texture of their skin might have some, um, for a better term, nooks and crannies, bumps and lumps. So you want to get around all those little crevices and really tap in your base coat color. Um, sometimes when the bisque absorbs the paint, you may have to go back and um, do a second coat. Or just hit it in a couple of spots to make sure that you get a good coverage. Because what we're going to do is we're going to lay on different colors of paints, different layers of paints. Very thin layers of paints will we'll build our color. And as we do that, if we have any crevices we haven't covered in our base coat, they usually stand out like a sore thumb. As you're applying your acrylic paint, remember that acrylic paint um, doesn't dry immediately, but it does dry fairly quickly, especially if you're brushing it out as you should. You don't want any bubbling or any puddles. Uh, so you have to be careful of that when you're painting a textured piece. So you want to make sure you get that covered very well. Now for this piece, when I'm finished, I'm going to spray this with a sealant and I will be able to use it. I just won't be able to put it in my sink and wash it off. But I could use it as a, as a, a trivet, put a hot pot on, it would be fine. But like I said, um, if you're going to do a, any kind of a mug or a vase, uh, any kind of a plate, you would want to do that in a glaze paint, uh, which requires a second firing of the bisque. And what it is is just really particles of glass that when it goes in the kiln that melts and then, then seals the surface so the bis bisque is protected. But this um, dry brush technique we're doing with acrylic paint 
and we it only requires one firing. So that's what you want. You want it to look very covered with your base color paint. And I have one here that I did earlier. Now this might be a little hard for you to see initially. Now once you have finished with your paintbrush, you want to get that in some water and rinse that off. I recommend you don't allow your paintbrush to sit in your water dish. This was always one of my pet peeves when I was teaching ceramic classes. Because if you leave it sit in your bowl, the bristles bend. And then you end up ruining your, your brush. So now I'll, I'll, when I'm finished, I'll take this to the kitchen sink and use some mild soap and water and really give that a good clean. So I'm going to put my base paint aside and now I have uh, this all coated. It's been sitting and drying for um, a little bit so we should be good to go. I think I tripped some water on there. So this is where I'm going to start using my dry brushes and I'm going to use my paper bag. and the colors that I've chosen for this project. Now my paints, I haven't used them for quite a long time, so I'm really not sure what to expect. Um, but you want your paints to be very fluid. And uh, to start out, I'm gonna start with the leaves. And I'm gonna use, I have these three brands of, uh, three different colors of paint. It's called Hauser Dark Green, Hauser Medium Green, and Hauser Light Green. These are by Americana, I'm sure, by Deco Art. I'm sure you can still find uh, these colors in your craft store. And so I'm going to start with my darkest color. And I'm just going to put a little dot of paint out on my uh, little acrylic film that I'm using for a paint palette. And the areas that I'm going to dry brush are fairly small. So I'm going to pick out a medium-sized dry brush. And uh, I am going to start with that brush dry. And I'm just going to tip the edge of the brush into the uh, paint. I'm hoping I can get this paint out. And then what I'll do is I'm going to rub it back and forth, the paintbrush back and forth, after it's loaded with the paint, on the paper bag. And what that does is that takes off most of the color that's on the paintbrush and will allow me to just put a light film of paint onto my surface. And then you want to build your color. So you're going to start with your dark color first, then your medium color, and then your light color will do the edges and some highlighting with that color. And so <clears throat> you can build your color and get this to be, oh, see, there's a piece of dust I I didn't. Uh... Let's go ahead and use this one. Just happened to see that. Um, you're going to build your color up. I think I'm going to just tip in there with a little bit of black paint because I think my other tile is not quite dry enough. We'll just kind of try to avoid that area. We'll work on the leaf over here. Now, you're going to use a light stroke back and forth, and what you're trying to do is um, get the paint to catch on the elevated surfaces of your piece. And so, um, you want to layer your color. You don't want to put a lot of color on at once. So, I'm just tipping my brush into the paint, just loading a little bit on there. Then I'm going to come in with my paper bag and just kind of rub that until I just get a very light bit of color. So I know that most of the color is off of my brush. And then I'm just gonna come in and start stroking across the surface of my leaf. I'll reapply, take some more of that paint off and start to build up my color. 
Now the dark on the dark is very hard to see, but eventually you will see that. Of course, I'm having a little difficulty because I don't have my, I'm going to put my work light on to see if I can see a little better. I'm just using light strokes. I'm going across the grain of my leaf. And I'm starting to build up my color. Now you're just putting, I don't know if you can see that. I'm just putting a little bit of color on at a time. Now I'm going to start in with this next leaf. Real light strokes back and forth. And as you get more comfortable with it, you'll know whether you can um, apply a little more paint. And then you want to let each layer dry before you apply your next layer of color. And remember, um, you can put as many layers on as you want. And get that color to look the way you want. So there's really no right and wrong way. Now if you're doing a snowman or you're doing even a Santa Claus, um, birds, I've done ducks and chicks, I've done pilgrims, this technique looks, the pieces just look amazing and wonderful. Now if you have a smooth surface, it's, you can still use this technique, but I would suggest you practice on some really textured um, objects first. See now you can see that little dot of white there where I had a piece of bisque pick off. So I'm gonna have to go back in and, and retouch that up with the black. But you can start to see now that I'm building my color, hopefully. Now what you're going to do is when you have this brush, now your brush is dirty, but that's okay. Now I wouldn't switch to my grape color with this brush because that will muddy the colors that I want to use. But I can use all of my green shades and use the same brush. Maybe I'll go ahead while I'm here and get some green on this last leaf. Now if you wanted that to be a little brighter, you would just continue to layer your colors. Just light strokes across the grain of the object. And then remember, you want to let that dry, it doesn't take long. Because if it's wet and you try to dry brush more color on top of it, you'll just take off the paint you've already laid down. And it's really kind of hard to recover from that. So now I'm going to go to my medium shade, my medium Hauser Green. I'm going to continue to use the same brush because it has my dark green on it. And what that means is that when I'm working my brush on my paper bag, again, I'm just loading a little bit of color. I'm going to work, work that through pretty well to try to get a nice medium shade. And we really should start to see the leaf take life here. I'm going to start with a real light stroke because I'm not sure how much of that's going to catch. And you'll see that it's starting to come alive. At least I'm trying to see in the camera if you can see how that's starting to pick up the color. Again, light strokes across. You're just trying to hit the top surface. You don't want the color to get down in those crevices that we put the dark paint into because that's going to provide our contrast. 
every time you apply paint to your brush, you're going to rub off the excess onto the paper bag. And as you become more familiar with the technique, you start to pick up your speed. Now, if you want, uh, if you're working on a project and you want your colors to be a little more vibrant, you may decide not to go with a black base coat. You may want to pick a lighter color. Actually, this color I'm using is not black black, it's licorice, so it's not as dark as a black black color would be. And then anywhere you think you uh, might like to have some more of this next color shade, you just keep adding your layers. And it just really... Um, I think the pieces just look like you've worked a lot harder than you have. Now I'm going to go to my lightest color in the green, which is the Hauser Light Green. Now with this color I'm mostly going to go to my edges and do my highlighting. I don't want to cover up all that um, layering that I've worked to create. So again, I'm going to just tip my paint brush into my next color. Just a little bit, you're going to load on the brush. And then again, go to my paper bag. I'm going to work that color through on my brush till I feel satisfied that I've got a nice light coat on my brush. And then I'm just going to start edging again with a light stroke my leaves now if you wanted to create some kind of a shadow you might want to leave one side of your leaf a little darker than the other and you're just pulling that color across the leaf and just catching the edge I'm just doing the inside edge of my leaves. Now because that edge is raised a little bit, that's going to catch most of my color. And again, once it dries, you're just putting on a thin film. Doesn't take long for that to dry. Just going to come back in and just keep applying layer after layer. Give your leaves some contrast. You can see that's starting to come alive there. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I now see I got a little too heavy handed there on that tip, but I can come back in with my black paint and cover that up or come in with another dry brush and kind of rub that that out. I can ask, also add a little bit of white to my brush and add some really um, bright spots on the leaf. You could also, if you want this to be more fall looking, you could add some reds and oranges. Um, really, it's up to you. Everybody's eye is different. You know what you're painting the piece for, whether it be a gift or a place in your home. So you can really paint it to match whatever you got going on. I, um... getting some brush hairs all over my piece.
piece. I'm going to go into a little bit of white. There is a product, at least there was years ago, and um, I can't find it in my garage. There were some colors called Hot Shot, and they were like a magenta uh, pink red color. They had a neon green and um, a yellow. I think there was an orange. And if you can find those, they add a really nice dimension to a piece like this. It almost makes it look like it lights up a little bit. And you could um, add that to the tips of your leaves as well. So you just want to come in and add a little highlight. Now the whole time that I've been working on this leaf, I've only used one brush. I did not put it in water, only into the paint. Now you can see. See, I think that's, for me, that's all I really need to do. So once I'm done with this green color, I'm going to then wash this brush. And when I'm done painting, I'll just put that in my water for now. And when I'm done painting my project, I'll take this to the kitchen sink and use some soap and water and give that a good scrub. Now, I don't have much in the way of colors for grapes. And so I found some um, paint by Folk Art. This is a dioxazine purple. It's a, I think it's a really dark purple. I'm not sure the consistency of this paint, so I'm going to see if this will work for me. Um, again, I'm just going to put a little bit of... That's really... Uh, I don't think I mixed that really well. You really, as you can see, you only use a little tiny bit of paint. I'm putting way too much paint now. But let me see if I can get this to work for me. So I'm going to try to do some of these grapes. So I'm going to take another dry brush, this might be a little too stiff, come into the purple. This is really a dark purple. I don't think I'm getting anything on there. I'm going to try another brush. And again, you're just doing the same thing you do with the leaves. Just putting on thin layers of paint. And this is really dark like the uh, black. And this is a true pigment color. So the texture and the, um, I don't think it's as opaque as some of the other acrylic colors. And because I don't have too much in the way of purple, I've got some mauves here that I can highlight with. What I'm going to try to do is mix some of this with my white. Here's some thicker. Yeah, that might, that might be better for me. To try to get a medium shade. And I'm going to just mix that all on my brush. That might be a little better. It's a little thicker. My paints have been sitting for quite some time unused. And so they are, they've thickened up a little bit. I'm sure you can't really see that yet. I'm starting to pick up that color. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of white on my brush and a little bit of this purple. And I don't want it to be too light because I want to get some different shading. Again, I'm just going to brush over the surface. Just adding layer and layering my color. Now if you wanted to, you could really take some of this paint with a, um, gosh, what do they call it, a, um, like a palette knife and uh, mix a medium color and a light color ahead of time and uh, really get the coloring and the shading that you want. 
You can start to see that purple starting to come alive a little bit. And then I'm just going to continue to add some white and lighten that up. Again, the same idea. You're just catching the edge of the raised part of your project. I want them a little darker at the bottom so it can always come back in and add some depth of color. If I really wanted to darken that up, I can use another brush that doesn't have any white in it and apply that. Let me do that. Like this doesn't have any color in it. Get some more of that dark purple and I can come back and reapply this and just use the, the brush and start adding some color to the bottom of those uh, grapes. to create some contrast of color. And then I can continue to lighten it. The top part of the grapes. And what you want to do is probably use a smaller brush. Now I'm kind of doing this upside down so you do a much better job than I would. And then if you wanted to add some additional color, I have a color here called Plum Pudding. I might add this to just a few of the grapes um, to give it a little more contrast. Oh, this one hasn't been opened. Oh, that's a nice color. Now, I don't want it too wet. I want it dry, so I really want to work that brush. You get that color off of it. And so then I'm just going to come in and choose a few grapes. It's not really coming up for me too well. But again, the coloring of your project is whatever you want it to be. The idea is you don't want to go um, with a black surface or a dark surface immediately to a light color because you're going to have a hard time getting that to cover. So you want to gradually build your co your color. This is just changing a couple of the grapes, coloring here and there. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to leave them darker towards the bottom. And I'm going to come back in here with my smaller brush and lighten up that color. You don't want to do that. You don't want to put your fist down into the wet paint. <laughs> So you want to use your paper bag. I mean, once this green dries, you can scrub right over top of that because that's not going to get on your brush. So now I'm just going to come in and really lighten up a couple of these grapes. 
just on the one side. And then what I would do for the stems, I might decide to uh, dry brush those, but I might just come back in with a regular paintbrush and like a twiggy branch brown color and just paint those in. But I'm going to leave my background black. And then I would probably trim out the edge of this tile. But you can start to see those grapes are starting to come alive as we add some color. Contrasting highlight color. And that's pretty much it. I'm a little been a little longer than I thought I would be. I hope you can see that well enough. So that's how you dry brush. Perf uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, and practice really uh, will help you conquer the technique. Well, I think that looks really great. And you just can add more color, and I'm just adding more and more white. And I'm not hitting every grape, just a few, kind of out of frame. So that's it for today. That's our dry brushing. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.